Hello and welcome back. For this video, I'm sorry to present to you the foreigner named Press Harder. <coughs> Press Harder is a vulgar hillbilly with mental issues. That is the most polite way I could describe him. In his most recent video, we find him in Gainesville, Florida doing some cop watching when he also ends up recording an accident. He's able to control himself for a little while, but then he has a complete and total profanity-laced meltdown when he's asked to move. The officers are saints in dealing with him with politeness and courtesy, with one officer even trying to calmly educate this lunatic. But there's no working parts in this Fortiner's brain here in the Fortiner's Zone. On this episode, we're going to learn how to pluck a jive turkey dressed like a pig right out of the barnyard by noticing its foul nature, and then we're going to clip its wings so it never gets off the ground again when it flaps around as we point our fingers and laugh, mocking every gobble gobble that comes out of his bird beak until the oven heats up to just the right temperature to roast him with friends and family, mashed potatoes, gravy, and of course, freshly baked rolls and lots of lols. Happy Thanksgiving and stay till the end if you want that pumpkin pie. What was that? Good question. Unfortunately, some questions are better off never ever being answered because the answer would change the world of sanity as we all know it. I want you to keep in mind though, this is a freedom fighter that is fighting for your rights. Let that sink in for a while. Yeah, yeah. Press harder now. We got gang activity in West University in 11th, Gainesville, Florida. Looks like he's just sitting here. Are you just sitting here? How are you doing tonight? Are you just sitting here? Oh, well, on the weekends this gets really backed up and then there's a ton of people here and it creates a really bad hazard. Creates a really bad hazard. Yeah. I hear that. What's your name, Officer? Bilali. Bilali. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Has it been bad tonight or? Tonight? Fortunately, no, it hasn't been too bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. How you been tonight? You're not cold? Am I not cold? You're not cold? Yeah. Well, just as you said that, I hope everybody's all right. Wow. Peeps are drunk as hell around here. What happened right there? Right where we were standing. So 
he's gonna go get his car and come over here I guess you all right man hey hey Price Hotter just quietly films the scene for quite a while until the forwarder in him reaches its boiling point and he just explodes on a cop for no reason at all. Let's cut to that moment. What's your name? What is your name? You, you sorry ass pig. What is your name? I've been here for 25 minutes and not one of these cops have said shit to me and you think you too, too close. close nobody's too detained close. is this a crime scene you're too close you this isn't you're closed too close. i don't see any crime scene tape back up. i was back you up. or what yeah what law am i breaking that's cool. can record. what you're law too close. am i breaking you're too close. what law space. what your in space are you north korea do you claim 300 miles up your coast you sorry ass piece of shit F you tell me i'm too close this is what I can't stand about foreigners. Let me first note that I have no problem with anyone filming the police. Just filming the police does not make someone a foreigner. It's this behavior that makes them a foreigner. This is a car accident. What is so horrible about moving back and letting the police deal with the people involved in the accident? Cameras have a zoom feature. In addition, why do foreigners have to go on profanity laced tantrums when simply asked to move back. This isn't the only foreigner that does this. They want to be treated like professional journalists, but then act like immature lunatics. If you want to be treated like an adult, then you must first act like an adult. Anyway, let's continue. There's a lot more cursing I have to edit out. How dare he? What is his name? What's your name? What is your name? What is your name? Vander... What the f*** is it, man? Why are you so top secret? Huh? Marinshaw. Marinshaw. And what's this piece of shit's f***ing name? Are you his superior? I want to talk to your f***ing sergeant. I want to talk to your sergeant, you worthless piece of shit. Nobody's f***ing detained here. I can walk any goddamn place I want in the free f***ing America. This bank isn't closed. How f***ing dare you? You're f***ing worthless. What's your name? It's cops like these that get other cops can hurt. Cops like these? You mean calm and professional cops? They've stood by patiently while being harassed with insults and curses while he's ranted and raved like a child. <laughs> I love it when foreigners call me a bootlicker like it's a bad thing. Not all cops are good. But all foreigners are indeed bad, so I'm pretty happy with the side I've chosen. Okay, back to editing the cursing out. This is what's creating the goddamn divide in this country, is worthless f***ing pieces of shit like you. Henderson, otherwise known as f***ing worthless, worthless f***ing Henderson, got to come and spout some f***ing orders like he's somebody, like he has some goddamn authority.
Why don't you f***ing clue yourself into reasonable, articulable suspicion, you little bitch? You f***ing punk. You f***ing coward. Can't even say his name. You're a f***ing disgrace. Get the f*** out of here and kick rocks. This dishonorable douche canoe continues to scream and rant and rave and curse like the hillbilly from hell that he is. I will spare you any more of it. I'll now move ahead to when he's calmed down and an officer tries to educate him. A poor officer. Yeah, yeah, you were professional, man. I was amazed that nobody got arrested, man. I mean, the way things, it was so volatile and there was, I, I don't know, like he said, disorderly conduct, I know he was talking about sometimes, them. Sometimes you gotta, I mean, you gotta make calls as a police officer that are pretty difficult. Yeah, you, but yet the one with the camera gets a problem from, from that one officer, see? You know, I had been here all that time, hadn't bothered any of you guys, I mean, you not, know? not everybody understand the safety issue, the way that we see it, and we don't expect that the rest of the population understand the way that we see it. We don't have yeah. to. Well, it depends. We don't have to. If you want a yellow tape and put yellow tape around, then um, I can navigate I the yellow I tape. I understand your statement about the crime scene tape. Yeah, it's not a crime scene. Yeah. Nobody's detained. Yeah, but the thing is, sir, that you should understand that sometimes scenes... They're volatile. Yeah, they can go from zero to 100 and... Which is I mean, an extra camera yeah, is no for, problem, man. For example, you as a civilian, you are a responsibility. I'm one of the people. Yeah, you are a responsibility. Your safety is my responsibility. No, bullshit. No, bullshit. No, it's not, man. Bullshit. No, the court has ruled that you have no obligation to protect my safety. If an officer doesn't have to run in and protect according, kids according in, a, in a I massacre... Like, I would like to search that. I Castle think. Rock versus Gonzalez. Castle Rock versus Gonzalez. That's right. I will look for that. Yeah, you have no obligation to protect my safety. That's actually not true. And that's not what Castle Rock versus Gonzalez was about. I'll let him first spew some more misinformation before I give the actual facts. Castle Rock versus Gonzalez, very famous case. What happened was is a lady had a, a restraining order out against a, a guy. Okay. And, um, and the guy um, was violating the restraining order and she called the cops and they didn't show up and he killed her, right? And um, and I guess her family is the one who sued, right? Oh, that's for sure. And, um, and the court ruled that they have you have no obligation to protect us, okay. no problem. right? And that's the I'll, citizens I'm I'll, talking about, I'll, but the people now, the people protect mm -hmm. themselves. I will search for that for sure. Yeah, Castle Rock v. Yeah. Gonzalez. Let's now move away from the fraudulent facts and look at the real facts of the case. Jessica Gonzalez requested a restraining order against her estranged husband. A state trial court issued the order, which prohibited the husband from seeing Gonzalez or their three daughters, except during prearranged visits. A month later, Gonzalez's husband abducted the three children. Gonzalez repeatedly urged the police to search for and arrest her husband, but the police told her to wait until later that evening and see if her husband brought the children back. During the night, Gonzalez's husband murdered all three children and then opened fire inside a police station where police returned fire and killed him. Gonzalez brought a complaint in federal district court alleging that the Castle Rock police had violated her rights under the due process clause of the Constitution by willfully or negligently refusing to enforce her restraining order. So, no, Gonzalez was not killed. It was her children that were killed, and it was not her family that brought suit. It was she herself that brought suit. Let's move on. The Due Process Clause states, No state shall deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. The District Court dismissed the complaint, ruling that no principle of substantive or procedural due process allowed Gonzalez to sue a local government for its failure to enforce a restraining order. So the case was about a restraining order not being enforced. On appeal, however, a panel of the Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit found that Gonzalez had a legitimate procedural due process claim. A rehearing by the full appeals court agreed, 
ruling that Gonzalez had a protected property interest in the enforcement of the terms of her restraining order, which the police had violated. The question of the case was can the holder of a restraining order bring a procedural due process claim against the local government for its failure to actively enforce the order and protect the holder from violence? The conclusion was no. In a 7-2 decision, the court ruled that Gonzalez had no constitutionally protected property interest in the enforcement of the restraining order and therefore could not claim that the police had violated her right to due process. In order to have a property interest in a benefit as abstract as enforcement of a restraining order, the court ruled, Gonzalez would have needed a legitimate claim of entitlement to the benefit. The opinion by Justice Antonin Scalia found that state law did not entitle the holder of a restraining order to any specific mandatory action by the police. Instead, restraining orders only provide grounds for arresting the subject of the order. The specific action to be taken is up to the discretion of the police. The court stated that this is not the sort of entitlement out of which a property interest is created. The court concluded that since Colorado has not created such an entitlement, Gonzalez had no property interest and the due property clause was therefore inapplicable. Justice John Paul Stevens joined by Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg dissented. So, once again, Gonzalez was not killed, it was she herself that brought the suit, and the case was about the failure of the police to enforce a restraining order in which the court found that Gonzalez did not have a right to sue the police for not enforcing the restraining order. Nowhere does it state that police don't have to protect anyone. How can one forwarder get so many facts wrong? Eh, stupid question. If forwarders got their facts straight, it would ruin the whole forwarding scam and they'd have to find a real, um, I'll spell it to avoid triggering the forwarders, J-O-B. But also on the same, on the same hand, it doesn't make sense for us, why, you know, the sense for us being police officers, public safety, so. Well, that's the lie that you tell yourself and your kids and your family at night and stuff. Yeah, but it's not really true, man. It's not really true. I mean, who are you protecting? You know, most of the time you get there and draw chalk outlines, right? You're responding after the fact. Um, you can't, you know, police and stop crime. It's impossible, right? You can sit on these corners and try and have a presence, but... Um, you can contain it. Well, maybe somewhat, I mean... It's like narco traffic. You can stop narco traffic, but you can contain it. You know what I'm saying? Contain it? Contain it. Contain it to the whole continent certain, certain, or what? No, certain, certain areas. Certain, certain areas. <laughs> oh, just keep it to certain areas. Oh, you think so, huh? But nothing, sir. Um, what's your name again? It's not nice to call people names, man. Okay, well, nothing. It was a, pl it was a pleasure to know you, sir. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going back to the road. So yeah, yeah. You have a good night, safe, man. Okay? You be safe, too. Have a good night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, officer safety is cowardice, though. Public safety, that's heroism. Well, duh, how is the officer supposed to protect the public if they themselves are killed? And officer safety is not cowardice. Officers have every right to protect themselves just like anyone else. I know all foreigners are reeling from all the logic and facts right now, but it had to be said. Sorry, not sorry. If you liked this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. It's now time for the cool down to lower your blood pressure back to normal levels, take a deep breath, and come back to a saner world with this compilation of amazing humpback whales.